choice may be the word that people use when they talk about abortion, but that is not the choice this story is about. This is about the choice that parents are being offered to take their children out of public school and enroll them in a private school free of charge. The issue is being put to the test right now in Milwaukee, a city where the public schools do just about as bad a job of educating kids as any place else in America. Reporting tonight from Washington. And on the American agenda this evening, giving parents a choice in their children's education, how well is it working? Education is next, specifically efforts to let students choose which public school they will attend. As we promised, another closer look now at schools in America. Not about how schools are failing. This is a story about how some people believe schools can succeed when parents are given some choices and the schools themselves some competition. Wyatt Andrews reports tonight's Eye on America. This year, Sandy McGill finally got her choice and she chose to pull her daughter Chandra out of the Detroit public schools. She was not alone. At the same time, federal education officials are giving strong backing to another idea that has been embraced by minorities, school choice. Education is a people issue, and it really doesn't matter who's in the White House or, or who's in the State House or the Courthouse or City Hall. It doesn't matter who controls all those houses. It matters who controls our house. Parents have got to be in control of their own homes and their own children, and then parents make those decisions, and then all these other houses respond and respect what parents want for their children. Well, we studied 500 schools from all around the nation, and we found, in essence, that the schools uh, that are succeeding are the ones that are closest to the families, the ones where the teachers and the principals have a lot of authority and responsibility in responding to the families. The schools that are failing in this country are the ones that are overly bureaucratized, where the decisions are being made far away in central offices by superintendents and politicians and so forth. This is helping the public school system because now they've got to compete. And that's all we want. We're not trying to kill the public schools because there are not enough seats in the private sector for all the children in the public schools around this nation. But what we want to do is say to you, you need to be able to uh, compete for these students. You got to give a better product. That's all we want, make the product better. Choice in and of itself cannot save the public school system. It needs to go through some really serious reforms. But choice is just one of the uh, types of reforms that can help save the public schools where the majority of our children will be. In the words of Dr. King, how long must we wait? Okay, why is it that this child here should have to be in a system that is working on change, but have to be in the system 10 more years per se and still not learn while you're waiting to change. My response to that is be patient with me while I'm being patient with you, okay? While you're working for change, allow me to find the best road possible. When you make that change, come get me because I'll be the first one behind you. I thank God for the Choice Program. Jeanette Williams is unemployed, a single mother who was lucky enough to get her eight-year-old son into the Choice Program at Urban Day. You got to give the children something to get motivated by. And I don't think that it's, it's happening with the Milwaukee public school system. East Harlem, New York City. It's not your typical school district. Over half of the people who live here fall below the poverty line. Economically, it's a depressed area, but educationally, it's rich. Because of a system of choice, East Harlem's 12,000 students now have a wealth of opportunities. That wasn't always the case. Of the 32 school districts in New York City, it ranked 32nd in reading and mathematics. The worst. The worst. Attendance was poor. Suspensions were high. All the things that you associate with, with a failing school system, we were number one in. At that point, 13 years ago, when things just couldn't get any worse, District 4 School Board and Superintendent Anthony Alvarado took a gamble. They encouraged each junior high school to develop a different educational program and then let parents choose. The gamble has paid off. We moved somewhere, we now moving between 16th, 17th, and 18th in the city. And well, that's an impressive kind of move. 15% of the kids in this district read at or above grade level in 1972 and 3. 15%? 15%. We now are up to 64%. Now that's 
That's significant strides. But what you're doing, it sounds as if you're making public schools like private schools. Well, I have a standing rule. I've always felt what's good for the children of the wealthy, I will almost automatically accept for the children of East Harlem. But hardly, without questioning it, if it's good enough for rich kids, I think we can impose it upon our poor kids. Just makes sense. Carlos Medina and Coleman Ginn used to be top school administrators in East Harlem. Today, along with Cy Flegel, they work at the Center for Educational Innovation, developing public school choice programs around the country. The spending issue is very important. New York City does manage to spend seven and a half billion dollars a year in the public schools. And we would make the case, along with those who speak about the archdiocese, that the schools spend an awful lot of money that never reaches the children, or the system does. Only one third gets to the school. Now that's a problem. Now in private schools, whatever it costs, all goes to the school. What an edge that is. Well, on the other side of it, how can parochial schools educate their youngsters for $2,500? Well, that's approximately what's happening with public school funds in terms of getting to the school. So that's a major, major difference. Charter schools are the next step in the quest for local autonomy, local control beyond contract schools. Instead of contracting with the school board, the charter school takes its charter directly from the state, bypassing the local bureaucracy. It's an idea slowly emerging into reality in cities like Detroit, Chicago, and Baltimore. And I think the charter school is a great idea because it provides a way to inject competition and provide real alternatives within the public sector uh, without the controversy involved in moving to the private sector for alternatives. So the concept of charter schools is really one uh, that bears watching, not only in Minnesota, but also in other states where it's now being debated. The key idea of charter schools is to test the, qu is to test the notion Will schools improve? Will students learn more if the continued existence of the school depends on what happens to students? Presently, schools continue to receive their money. Teachers continue to get money. In fact, teachers continue to get pay increases regardless of how well the students do. The charter school notion says, are there any teachers out there who would be willing to say, we can improve student achievement and we'll stake our school's existence on that fact? The cornerstone of our effort here in Detroit is uh, what we refer to as empowerment. Some folks refer to as autonomy. Uh, but in a nutshell, you know, one word takes care of and that's freedom. It's a freedom for teachers to figure out how to get the job done. It's freedom for great leaders to be able to lead uh, their schools, setting a direction based on their vision. It's freedom for parents to choose a school that will best educate their children. It's freedom, that's what it is.